Tonight we have new information in the deadly shootout in the seventh ward. Another developing story that we've been following all morning. New Orleans police are investigating a double murder. New Orleans police are looking into the murder of last night in the seventh ward. We counted at least 25 evidence tags. Year the shooting happened in the seventh ward. Dip through that banana. I'm gonna show you how it is. Rock back here. Hold on. It's crazy. Let's roll. Located in the city seven ward, the St. Bernard project was built over a few decades beginning in the 1940s. It would have the distinction of being the second largest housing project in the city. The St. Bernard project, located in downtown New Orleans, a subdistrict of Mid City, would consist of boundaries defined by the New Orleans City of Planning and Commission, Harrison Avenue to the north, Paris Avenue to the east, Lafayette Street and Florida Avenue to the south, or Bayou St. John to the west. Like most public housing projects in the NO, the Bernard would be deemed not a very safe project as it would become a battleground for hustlers during the height of the late 80s. The Bernard was once nicknamed Dodge City due to the wild busting back and forth that would occur between rival crews. Throughout the early 2000s, there were 44 crushings and 680 serious acts committed in the St. Bernard. Between 2002 and 2003, the Bernard would have a total of 25 deletions, 13 smashings in 2002, and 12 crushings in 2003. Many of the residents blamed Hanno for displacing residents from the housing project for the rise in deletions. At one point, the St. Bernard project would go by the nickname the St. Thomas, a spinoff from the St. Thomas and St. Bernard projects. According to the NOPD, the St. Bernard projects will record around a dozen deletions per year. The NOPD would attribute the crushings to turf wars. However, the deletions would eventually decline, giving residents hope that peace may soon be a reality for their housing development. Some were speculating that the crime situation in the Bernard was beginning to improve due to the crime themselves. According to the NOPD, rival ops were knocking each other off, solving half of the problem. The other half was being dealt with legally by locking them up. When Hurricane Katrina ravaged New Orleans' largest public housing developments in 2005, civic leaders would reinvent the St. Bernard's housing community as the Columbia Park. The Columbia Park revitalization would be one of the largest urban transformation projects to ever take place in the U.S. A. The Bernard, once plagued by crime, failing schools, and overcrowding, would successfully replicate a mixed income housing model pioneered by a community in Atlanta, Georgia. The St. Bernard Housing Community, SBHC, constructed in the 1940s, is New Orleans' longest running public housing community. At its peak, the Bernard would have 13,333 units. By 2005, the building's infrastructure had deteriorated to the point that only 960 units were livable. A racially profiled article posted in the Time Picayune would read that the residents of the St. Bernard were living in tremendous poverty with very low educational achievement. Only two schools in the community were ranked in the lowest percentile of the public school system of New Orleans. There was really no opportunity for children to escape the area through education. It all will become a massive problem in terms of criminal activity. Four years prior to Hurricane Katrina, there were 44 deletions and 680 felonies on the 50 acres of the former St. Bernard footprint. The NOPD will report that it was a very, very dangerous community to live in. In 2017, a man accused of four crushings in New Orleans will quietly plead guilty to reduce charges the day after the grand jury will expand the scope of a sweeping street crew case involving him and five others. Errol Illy Krish will plead guilty to connection with four deletions in early of 2017 after prosecutors reduced the charges against him from second degree to manslaughter. Illy would also accept responsibility for a slew of other charges. Criminal District Judge Karen Herman was sentenced Illy to 35 years in prison the same day. However, court records did not show whether Illy had agreed to cooperate with prosecutors. Guilty pleas will come the day after the grand jury will charge two more men as suspects in the crushings of Kayla the enemy, a mother of five at the door of her New Orleans East apartment. The new indictment will read that Illy, Vernell Vernt Nelson, and Andre Dre Francis were involved in deleting the enemy. The incident will leave a courtyard and the Chateau de Orleans complex littered with dozens of shell casings. Vernt and Dre will be charged with second degree. 
It is alleged that all three men were trying to smash another man when they deleted the enemy, according to the 17 account indictment that will come out nearly two months after Illy was charged with the crushing. The enemy's relatives will say the target was her ex-boyfriend, Burnt, who was already in custody in connection with a separate armed robbery when the grand jury handed down the new indictment would be charged. Dre will be booked later on the same charges. The deletion of the enemy will come at the end of a spirit of violence that would involve six men working together to carjack and smash their ops. The first crushing would take place on January 27 when Illy and Edmund Toon Bacchus were accused of busting three women inside a car in the 7th Ward. The woman's vehicle was found at North Claiborne and Orleans Avenue. Latanya Clark would lose her life, the other two women would survive. Illy would also be accused of smashing brothers Tory and August Riley on St. Rock Street on January the 28th. It was alleged that Illy would then team up with Vern and Ray to delete the enemy on the morning of February the 2nd. The NOPD will report that the crushing spree ended that night after police and federal agents swooped in on a house in the 2300 block of Murray Street to arrest Illy, Cole, and Toon. Inside the crib, investigators will recover two choppers, a glizzy, and two Rugers. Cole will be charged with nine counts in connection with the group's activity. Cole will plead guilty the same day as Illy, receiving a nine-year prison term. Defense attorney Jeffrey Smith will state that Cole and Illy were close friends growing up. Cole, who was raising a family in Arizona before making the mistake of returning to the NO, had played on himself. Bernie Porsche Creole pronunciation, Bernie Porsche, a.k.a. Tank, whom would have ties in both the Magnolia and St. Bernard projects, would pass at the age of 37 after an incident with state police. Officers would allegedly be on patrol looking for stolen vehicles when trying to make a traffic stop in a vehicle they believed to be stolen. As they were stopping the vehicle, one subject would hop out and start busting at them, hitting one of them in the left elbow. During the hunt for suspects, they would come across one of the suspects who would later be identified as Bernie Porsche, a.k.a. Tank, near Law and New Orleans Avenue. According to the NOPD, Tank would be seen on dash cam video hitting at officers while fleeing. Upon the officer returning, Tank would fall to the ground. After a brief period of motionless, Tank would then be seen moving his arm, hitting himself in the head. Tank would be hit three times, once to the leg, once to the lung, and one self-inflicted. Due to video evidence, Tank's passing would be classified as with a self-inflicted wound. Detectives would gather early on a Saturday on a blighted into the street and tend to the city's latest deletion. They would find a familiar face. In the 3500 block of Hamburg Street would lay Jarrell Smith, a.k.a. Jigger. He had been crushed. During the past decade, Jigger would elude the NOPD like perhaps no other accused criminal in New Orleans history. Time and again, prosecutors and police would tie him to crushings, lock him up, and prepare a case only for it to fall apart. Due to the witnesses being afraid to come forward, no one, and I mean no one, would testify against Jigger. If they did plan on testifying, they would not make it to court. The NOPD would allege in 2003, Jigger was paid $10,000 to delete James Tapp, a.k.a. Soldier Slim. His alleged accomplice, Stephen Kennedy, a.k.a. SK, will be crushed in Houston, Texas. No witness will come forward on the deletion of Slim. The case would be dropped. That same year, the NOBD would claim that Jigger smashed Spencer Smith Jr. As with previous cases, witnesses wouldn't come forward and the case would be dropped. In 2007, Jigger was locked up for the crushing of 24-year-old Mandel Duplessis. That same year, Jigger would also be locked up on charges for crushing Terry Brock. As with all of the previous cases, no witnesses, no case. The charges would be dropped. Receptionist, please bring my vitamin. I'm coming, doctor. Vitamins good, keep me well, make me feel good. Mm, good. Food City, 1826. We got nine to ten shots in the seven wall. 
We got people down. This is one area of the city where you're looking at six, seven, eight percent of all of the shootings citywide happening in just a half mile circle. It's one body after another when it is so sad, so hurtful. We got kids walking the street and it's gone from night to day and it's a hurting thing. We need somebody to step up and help us. The Seven Ward is one of the 17 wards of New Orleans, Louisiana. Geographically, the Seven Ward is the third largest of the 17 wards of New Orleans after the Ninth Ward and the 15th Ward. The Seven Ward has a population of 10,552 and a crime rate of 10,995 per 100,000, which is 369% higher than the national average. Residents have a 1 in 10 chance of becoming the victim of any type of crime. The Southern Ward has long had problems stemming from poverty. The Southern Ward stretches from the Mississippi River to Lake Pontchartrain. The eastern boundary is Edison Fields, the boundary that is geographically close to the 8th Ward. In the direction to the southwest, the boundary is Esplanade Avenue, the border closest to the 6th Ward. From where Esplanade meets Bayou St. John, the boundary follows the Bayou north to the lake with the 5th Ward being across from the bayou. The Seven Ward is home to many family-owned businesses such as bars, restaurants, bakeries, corner stores, hair salons, and barber shops. Many of the families that reside in the Seven Ward are of Creole heritage with last names such as Fontenot, Degru, Beret, LaCour, Arsenal, LeBlanc, Robichaud, just to name a few. Per NOPD crime stats, the Seven Ward, which is part of the 5th District for years, has been amongst the most violent wards in the city, giving the Ninth Ward a run for its money. 7th Ward. Police said they got a call this morning to a home on North Durgenois near Columbus Street. That's where we find WDSU's Aubrey Killian joining us live this afternoon from this scene. Aubrey, do we know how this woman died? Well, first, Christina, this neighborhood, they are stunned and really just heartbroken. Behind me, I want to show you a memorial is growing for the woman who was found dead out here. Neighbors have actually set up flowers out here. So this is out here on the 1500 block of North Dorgenois Street. At around 7.30 a.m., officers, they responded to a call of a stabbing. NOPD found the woman outside a home, and she was stabbed multiple times, according to investigators. The woman was then rushed to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. Police are working right now to figure out who is behind this deadly stabbing and really what led up to all of this. I spoke with one woman who knew the woman that was stabbed. She says she was well known and loved by so many here in the neighborhood. She can't believe that this all happened. Take a listen. This is a close neighborhood here and to have this happen here, it's it's eerie. This is not natural. This is New Orleans. This is 2021, and you're killing people behind a car. A car. I, I don't get it. So again, there is a memorial that is growing for this woman who was killed out here. No arrests have been made. Police are still working to figure out a motive. Of course, if you have any information on this, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number, it is 822-1111. Reporting live, I'm Aubrey Killian, WDSU News. In the mid to late 80s, before trigger play would be at an all-time high, hood fights would be the thing, with crews such as the Ballet Boys earning a reputation in the streets. The Ballet Boys, who started off as a group of partners, jumping shop, and being on the females, would soon graduate to the next level. In both junior and senior high school, both of the Ballet Boys would actually be band heads. Don't get being in the band twisted with being suckers. The Ballet Boys were not cowards by any means, with some of the original members members being Steve Dolphin, a.k.a. Ballet Boy Steve, Irvin Green, a.k.a. Boosie, Kirk Jackson, a.k.a. Ballet Boy Kirk, Brian Turner, a.k.a. Black Brian, and Fat Frank, who was one of the first hustlers out of the crew. If you know, you know. One of the notorious Hardy brothers out the yo would even run with the Ballet Boys. With the surge of that hard in the late 80s, homicides would drastically increase in the Seventh Ward, with 22% of the homicides happening in the city taking place in or around 
the seventh ward. The St. Bernard Project, aka Pilot Land, will be labeled as one of the most dangerous projects in the city. On the high side, the St. Bernard Project has historically recorded over 13 murders per year alone. For example, from 2001 to 2005, there were 44 homicides and 680 serious and violent crimes committed in the Bernard. The biggest mistake made when it comes to the Seven Ward is the misconception that all the women are bad red bones and the dudes are high yellow pretty boys with curly hair. Fucking around downtown, you'll find out soon enough that this is hardly the case. Contrary to popular belief, the Bernard wouldn't be the only violent neighborhood in the Seven Ward. Crime was skyrocketing in the Seven Ward with the rise of the newer generations. In the 80s and 90s, there was somewhat of an unordinary rule in the streets. Women and kids were off limits unless in fact, the woman was actually involved with grimy street shit herself. And the N.O. don't for one minute believe that the men are the only ones that are involved with hustling, violent crimes, and homicides. New Orleans police are looking into the murder of a woman last night in a 7th ward. This happened just before 10.30. Officers arrived on the scene near the intersection of New Orleans and Rochablave streets and found a 33-year-old woman had been shot. EMS took her to the hospital where she died. Police say the coroner will release the victim's identity. If you know anything that can help investigators, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. As the younger generations would jump off the porch, crimes would become more violent and more frequent. Four men, all brothers and alleged members of the Seven Ward F and D gang, were sentenced for their roles in shooting on Mother Day in 2013, along with other gang-related crimes. FND Punk worked in the Seven Ward and committed acts of violence, including shootings and homicides. FND hustled in and around the French meat market, a convenience store located at the corner of Frenchman and North Derbyny. FND was notoriously known for using intimidation, violence, and threats of violence to maintain the gang's control over its turf that extended from Field Avenue, North Johnson Street, the I 10 Interstate Highway, St. Anthony Street, and North Claiborne Avenue. The Mother's Day shooting during the second line was leave 20 people injured. The shooters were alleged members of the Frenchman in Derby gang, aka FND. Police comb through a neighborhood stricken by violence on what should have been a joyous celebration. Hundreds were in the crowd at the annual Mother's Day second line parade when shots rang out, striking a dozen people. The youngest victim was just 10 years old. She is said to be in good condition. Those enjoying the parade are in shock. My family was second line in the parade and then all of a sudden it just stopped and everybody started running and running and running and we were wondering what's going on and they shooting and they say children were shot and everything. It's just time to stop with the violence. It's not cool. It's Mother's Day. Who want to lose a child on Mother's Day? EMS reports three people are in critical condition, but no one was killed. One neighbor saw victims collapse in front of her. I just opened my door today and two guys just collapsed right down my steps, you know, and me and my daughter did the best thing we can to revive them, you know, and I think we have saved another life today. Police say more than 10 officers were patrolling the second line. They saw three men run from the scene after shots rang out down Frenchman Street toward Claiborne Avenue. The gunmen are still on the loose. These are unusual circumstances. We have second lines that occur in the city of New Orleans virtually every weekend at this time of the year. We had a full complement of police officers. Uh, it appears that these two or three people just for a reason unknown to us, started shooting at, towards, or in the crowd. It was over in just a, a couple seconds. Police were everywhere. It's the area's second shooting in a week. Now neighbors are pleading, stop the violence. I don't like this to happen around here. And then on the Mother's Day and the children involved with it too, you know why we can't have peace. Travis and Aiken Scott, Creole pronunciation Aiken, were sentenced by U.S. District Court Judge Ivan Lamel to life in prison plus 10 years for their involvement with F and D, while Sean and Stanley Scott would each be sentenced to 40 years for their involvement with F and D. PCB, another crew of young killers, would also hail from the Seven Ward. Jamal Clay, aka Young Maul, was a demon out here in these streets. PCB was beefing with multiple dudes at the same time. F and D out the seven. YMF out the seven. Not to be confused with Young Melts Mafia. Bird Gang out the Noya. BMG out the Florida. And the Goonie Gang out the Ville. 
The state would charge Maul with second degree murder in the death of Roger Gordon, who was gunned down in a courtyard of the Ville, May 22nd of 2009. Roger was hit up standing next to his cousin, an alleged member of the Goonie Gang. One of the Goonies had crushed two dudes from the Wild Side Gang out the Sixth Ward. PCB allegedly clicked up with the Wild Side and went with the move when Roderick was deleted. The state would later arrest and charge five men, Jamal Clay, Travis Burt, Joseph Kemp, Quincy Jackson, and Dominic Grant. Joseph, Quincy, and Dominic were all alleged members of the Wild Side Gang out to Sixth Ward. The jury would convict Travis Burke, aka T Streets, of second degree murder in January of 2011. He was given a mandatory life sentence. The state's case against T Streets would rely on a sole eyewitness who would also implicate Maul as a shooter. DA would later send a notice to T Streets that the man who had witnessed the murder told prosecutors he and Maul were not the killers. That witness who claimed that there were three attackers rather than five had not been called to testify at T Street's trial. T Streets will petition the Louisiana Supreme Court to review his conviction. That request would be denied. Meanwhile, the DA would offer deals to the other defendants. Quincy would plead guilty to manslaughter, agreeing to an eight-year sentence for credit for time served and the remaining time to be suspended, meaning he was eligible for immediate release. Those of it Dominic pled guilty to accessory after the fact to second-degree murder. They would both agree to five your prison sentences, but like Quincy, they were given credit for time served. The remaining time was suspended. Maul would decline to accept a plea deal and prepare to go to trial. Judge Fleming granted the state's request for a continuance when a material witness against Maul refused to show up to court for his trial. When the other defendants pleaded guilty to various charges in exchange for release, Paul chose to remain in jail and wait for his day in court. Paul, who had already been locked up for four years, would eventually enter an Alfred plea in front of Arlene's Parish Criminal District Court Judge Tracy Flemings, receiving a 24-month sentence with credit for time served. A rash of violence will continue in the city. Four men convicted of a murder for hire plot that saw a federal government witness in a Medicare fraud case slain in the Chile will be sentenced to life in prison during a hearing in U.S. District Court. With age the third, Ronald Wilson Jr. and Stanton Guillory will be found guilty of murder for hire and conspiracy to commit murder in addition to a slew of other crimes connected to the 2012 smashing of Milton Womack. Milton had struck a plea deal with prosecutors to testify against Lewis, who allegedly ran a fraudulent health care claim scheme. Before Milton could testify, he would be shot to death as he sat in his truck in the 2700 block of Urbana Street. Louis A. Jr. allegedly ordered the hit. His son, Louis A. III, and Ronald Wilson Jr. allegedly coordinated the killing. Stanton Guillory would smash Milton. Louis A. Jr., Louis A. III, a.k.a. B. Lou, Ronald Wilson, a.k.a. Tank, and Stanton Guillory, a.k.a. Nan Nan, were all sentenced to multiple terms of life imprisonment for their roles in the murder of a federal witness in a healthcare fraud case out of the middle district of Louisiana. This was the story of the violent streets of the 7th Ward.